from quality is free to Six Sigma. Not harder. Japan needed to, to do this for survival. Japan did it, we can do it. We make steel at a lower cost than any steel company in the world, including the Japanese. During the 1970s and 1980s, there was a lot of change in the United States in terms of manufacturing. American manufacturers were losing to their Japanese competitors. And most of it was based around the fact that Japanese products had superior quality. Whereas in the US up until that point, the thinking was that cost was just adding costs. In 1980, there was a documentary entitled, If Japan Can, Why Can't We? And that really is credited with starting the quality movement in the United States. Just a year earlier, Phil Crosby published his book, Quality is Free, in which he outlined that adding quality to your production system does not add cost. In fact, produce defective products, and therefore, Building in quality is equally costly to throwing out defective products. A few years after these books and documentaries, new approaches to quality management emerged. And it also marked the time of rediscovering old forgotten quality gurus such as Edward instrumental in teaching Japanese manufacturers about quality in the 1950s when they started to rebuild their manufacturing prowess. Let me discuss three different approaches to quality management. The first one is total quality management. And TQM, as it's known, has four steps. First, quality is defined by the customer's requirements. So whatever the customers are expecting, the company is supposed to deliver. Second, management's responsibility, and they're supposed to spread it throughout the organization. Third, you improve quality through a systematic analysis of the products and the work processes. And fourth, quality improvement is a continuous effort of standards and what that does is it's achieved a minimum level of quality within your production systems and throughout your organization that are objective and you cannot just make up that certification in addition you're required to have your entire supply base be certified in order to gain the certification yourself. It's one of these international standards that is broadcasted throughout the world and that many companies are proud to display on their communication materials and even their outside buildings. And finally, there's the Six Sigma philosophy for quality improvement. It was first developed in 1986 by engineer Bill Smith, who worked at Motorola, and was quickly adopted throughout the entire organization. And then other organizations started picking up on it, such as General Electric under Jack Welsh. What Six Sigma refers to is the error-free rate. So in any process, you're going to aim for six standard deviations of defect-free products. That translates to 99.999966% error-free rate, or 3.4 defects in every million products produced. The Six Sigma methodology relies on a five-step method 
solving the problem, measuring it, analyzing it, improving and controlling the process. But it really depends on the industry. Take for example this latte I just bought. It's pretty good, but I wish it had more foam. Now in this industry, it doesn't matter because they'll just remake the drink. But in other industries, for example, if you buy a defibrillator, it's really a matter of life and death. You cannot afford for a product to fail.